Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News, where shockingly the top story of the day is not Robert Downey Jr. signing on for two more Avengers movies. What could be bigger news than that? How about the implosion of Warner Brothers that could have huge implications for the DC Cinematic Universe? What happened? Well, late last night, the head of Warner Brothers Pictures, Jeff Robinoff, tendered his resignation. Why would he do that, considering Gatsby opened big and Man of Steel, despite both being pretty controversial films? They're still pulling in box office numbers, at least so far. Why would he quit at what could very well be the high point of 2013 for Warner Brothers? Well, turns out the new head of Warner Brothers overall, Kevin Sujihara, really has had it in for Jeff Robinoff. He's had it in for a lot of people over there, and also their head of television also recently left. But with Robinoff, uh, Robinoff was trying to hold on, but Sujihara was not only kind of like blocking him out, uh, you know, in terms of like, uh, what he was doing and his, what, his, uh, t what his tasks were, but politically he was playing hardball, even to the point where he was giving uh, Robinov this silent treatment. That's right, apparently the straw that broke the camel's back was on the flight from Los Angeles to uh, New York for the Man of Steel premiere. Uh, you might have seen my video, I was on that carpet. Well, apparently, on the plane ride, Sujihara refused to talk to Robinov and ignored him, even though they were sitting across the aisle from each other. And Robinov felt that that was not only very rude, considering the fact that this was a huge movie that he had delivered for Warner Brothers, but that it was embarrassing in front of both Christopher Nolan and Zack Snyder, who are huge Robinov finds. They are people that you know he personally brought to the studio and has a good relationship with. So, considering that kind of treatment and that he, wasn't, he had yet to be offered a new contract since his ends this year, he called up last night and he said, I'm out. Now, why, you know, sad as it might be, why does this uh, have any implications for the DC Cinematic Universe or Warner Brothers in general? Well, the reason is, is that Jeff Robinov has huge loyalty from his top filmmakers. So we're talking Christopher Nolan and Zack Snyder right there. Uh, you know, they were talking about, this is all over the news uh, in the industry last night, and they, they have found a lot of quotes, and particularly on Deadline had a great article about this, that Christopher Nolan you know, he said, Robinov called me after Memento and has believed in me since then. And he's the one who was going to have me helm Troy, but I wasn't feeling it, the article says. So, uh, he, so Robinov was like, well, what do you want to do? And Nolan's like, you know, I've always kind of liked Batman. So Robinov said, okay, you can do it. Uh, and, and so there's just huge loyalty there to the point where they said that uh, Christopher Nolan's loyalty to Robinov is what got Warner Brothers, uh, you know, began the conversation to get Warner Brothers as one of the companies on Interstellar, the film that he's doing with Paramount. So uh, who knows? Nolan could leave with Robinov, which would be shocking. And certainly Zack Snyder, Robinov has been his biggest cheerleader. He, as, you know, as I was just talking about uh, in the video the, uh, yesterday about uh, you know his, uh, Nolan's house in order, that Robinov is the one who said, "Don't do Darren Aronofsky, do Zack Snyder because he's my guy." So what is that? So Zack Snyder might not, might not only leave Warner Brothers for loyalty, but he might leave have to leave because nobody else at Warner Brothers might be fighting for him. So, but be, even beyond that. It gets worse. I feel like Bill Murray and Ghostbusters talking about, you know, the end of the earth and what it means. This is what's going on over this kind of huge systemic meltdown over at Warner Brothers. Ben Affleck, huge talent, extremely loyal to Robinov. Robinov, you know, is the one he said, uh, Ben Affleck was also quoted as saying, you know, after Gone Baby Gone, nobody was calling. Jeff Robinov called. And for the town, when I needed an, another million dollars for reshoots, it's Jeff Robinov who said, here, take them. Uh, and let's see what you can do. And then look how well that film did. And then that paid off for Robinov when Argo walked off with Best Picture last year in a shocking surprise win. So he has personally saw, saw, uh, saw the rise of Ben Affleck, who became, because of Warner Brothers' investment, a huge commodity for the studio, which now they are in very serious danger of losing. And even Baz Luhrmann got in on this, saying that the reason that Gatsby was delayed was because uh, Robinov came to him and said, you might be able to make this initial release date, but can you really, can you make the movie that you want to make this release date? And Lerman was like, I don't know about that, Jeff. And Jeff said, you know what, let's push it back. And a controversial film, I would say, uh, but still, it's been a success box office-wise internationally. Not a huge box office success, but I think that was still uh, categorized as a win for Warner Brothers. Uh, so that's just shocking. And on a side note, I'd like to add, that I personally think Jeff, Rob Jeff Robinov is a great person. And here's why. I have been on two Warner Brothers red carpets that were just a madhouse. Uh, the Hobbit and then also Great Gatsby. And it looked like I wasn't going to get anybody because it was just so crowded and there were so many people who wanted interviews and it was a very long, uh, you know, press line and, you know, I, w I didn't have a great spot. But on both of those carpets, and I've linked to those videos at the end of this episode, Jeff Robinov stopped to talk to me. And in the case of the Gatsby video, I wouldn't have had a video if it wasn't for that. So 
I really, you know, he, he he did me a solid. He was a really nice guy. He answered all my questions very honestly. Uh, and as you can see, he's someone who believes in filmmakers. Now, I haven't believed in every uh, every film that's come out of his studio, as, as you know, uh, and I don't think it always works. I think maybe sometimes his loyalty is a little blind. But however, I can't I can't deny, and I don't think anybody can deny, even Kevin, Su even Kevin Sujihara, that Jeff Robinov builds relationships. And this reminds me a little bit of what happened when Dick Cook was fired from Disney, uh, because he was so popular and everyone loved him so much, and he really also had great relationships with his filmmakers. However, there, nobody left, because uh, I think there was just too much money at stake. However, as I've also talked about in this video, I think Nolan isn't kind of in love with the DC Universe anyway. This isn't like his life goal to make a great DC Cinematic Universe as much as we would like him to. So I can see them leaving, especially also the way Jeff Robinoff was, was treated. So if we have a mass exodus from Warner Brothers of Nolan, Snyder, Lerman, and Ben Affleck, what does that mean for the studio? And also, where are these guys going to go? Where's Jeff Robinoff going to go? I think that's going to be a fascinating next move. He quit on his own terms. He wasn't fired, even though he you know, was kind of somewhat frozen out and pushed. But he decided to take the leap. And so the question is, who's leaping with him? So while Warner Brothers is a DEFCON 2, uh, over at Marvel, they, you know, they're playing a game of chicken with Robert Downey Jr. And Disney and Marvel blinked. And, uh, of course, it was not released what, they've, what they're paying him. I'm sure it is a gigantic amount of money. But I don't see how they could have made Avengers 2 and 3 without him. And I think it's exciting he's on for 3 as well. You know, I thought maybe they were just going to get 2 in there. But I'm glad they were able to say, come on, you know, we're giving you probably like a truckload of money, Downey Jr. Do two of these. But fascinatingly, as people have pointed out, uh, no Iron Man 4 in there. And I have to say, after I th when I think about it, I think the Iron Man trilogy, I think it ended at a nice place. I don't know where else you can really go with that character except into team movies. So uh, I'm sure also, I'm sure there are some cameo allowances in there, uh, maybe for after credit scenes and stuff like that. But I think it was a good move all around. I think it was a good move for Robert Downey Jr. and a good move for uh, Disney Marvel, obviously. And I think no matter what they're paying him, I, I honestly feel it's worth it. I mean, think about it. He's the star, the driving force of um, two of the top four, uh, five, or maybe perhaps even four grossing movies of all time. Uh, and it also shows there is enough money in the universe to get things done, which gives hope to all of us dreamers that Christian Bale will come back as Batman and perhaps Disney will one day be able to buy back the rest of the Fox library from, uh, I mean, the rest of the Marvel library from Fox. That, that, we can dream, and dreams do come true. So, of course, that's, a, that's, what, that's Disney's specialty. So I think, you know, that's a good focus for today's episode, and I'm going to answer a question from yesterday. Uh, one question that I, that I thought was interesting was someone said, I don't understand the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Why is Orlando Bloom getting a star in the Walk of Hollywood Fame? No offense to Orlando Bloom, but he's not exactly someone I would think as Walk of Fame material. And let me, the point, the thing is, is that, you know, I think at one point, you know, the Hollywood Walk of Fame was uh, something that existed for posterity, but not anymore. It is basically another way to publicize a movie. You will notice that whoever gets a Hollywood Walk of Fame star, it happens to be right at the time that a movie or a television show or an album is coming out. And that's the case for both of the major nominees this year. Uh, I'm not nominees, inductees, I guess you could say, for the Walk of Fame. Orlando Bloom, he's coming back to the Hobbit film, so that's great publicity for that franchise. Uh, it's uh, arguably his most popular role. And then also you have Katy Perry, who is the other person, and she has an album about to come out uh, very soon. So they want to have those photos of them holding their, their star and, and get it uh, all over the press to further promote what's going on with them. So, you know, from a positive point of view, it's like, yay! You know, I'm glad that, you know, Hollywood's Walk of Fame is diversifying and reflecting, you know, the different popular things out there. And I guess pessimistically, you can be like another, another iconic part of Hollywood, you know, bites the dust and just becomes another part of, another cog in the PR machine. But, you know, also, let's not forget that the Hollywood Walk of Fame is now in a very seedy part of town. And a, a great uh, inside joke in Hollywood is kind of discussing who has the crappier location for their star. So, uh, you know what, I guess it's all part of the Hollywood myth and it works out. So, what do you think about what's going on with DC versus Marvel? We are going into Weekend 2 for Man of Steel. Don't forget to tune into Movie Math on Monday to see how it does uh, second weekend. This is going to be a, a huge uh, sign of what if this is a successful or 
not, it's not as successful as it needs to be filmed. We'll see what happens. We'll have a definitive answer, I feel, on Monday. Either way, we'll really start to see a pattern. Uh, and check back in later for uh, reviews of World War Z. Uh, uh, that's already up, actually. The World War Z uh, review is already up. That I did that. But Monsters University audience reaction will be up later today, as well as that. Finally, this is the end BTT crew review. Sorry about that. I had to slog through a lot of uh, footage. So thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts down below for what you'd like to see discussed on Monday and any questions you want answered. Bye.